Fukushima forgotten. So when the Fukushima Daiichi, the TEPCO nuclear plant on the coast of Japan, blew up. <coughs> That's not a great way to put it. That's what happened. There were two major events there. Two learning events. The first one was a massive earthquake. Now, that earthquake, standing by itself, devastated the plant, right? We understand that in the progress of the explosions and the three running nuclear reactors losing containment. So, the earthquake itself was a massive lesson in <laughs> nuclear engineering, in risk management, in engineering practices, in nuclear plant design. So let's talk quick to the first part of that. The earthquake itself. Now, most every plant in some way is vulnerable to an earthquake. So the lessons from that you would think would be something well noted, almost a standalone item to the nuclear industry. Because the earthquake itself fractured, broke, and shattered structural components inside the reactor. Those huge, massive cement structures had an earthquake uh, greater than design, right? This is one of those things you hear about. You see, there's no absolutes. Stop with the true and false. There's risks. So what happened in that plant was massive shared infrastructure pipes were broken. A toroid in one of the reactors was broken. One of the arms shattered. I'm doing this from memory, so you are welcome to correct me, but speak to it. So when the reactors, they all shut down automatically because that's what happens or manually depending on how the operations went but the alarms were triggered based on the earthquake event the tsunami was not in sight and that's what they were trying to deal with so in those ruptured shared facilities which are air handlers cooling handlers and other process pipes that run from one building to the next those were what is it called? Those items were broken. They caused hydrogen from these massive events to escape into the duct systems, into the other building, and that hydrogen buildup from multiple plants. But this was one of the major effects of the earthquake was the shattering of infrastructure shared infrastructure necessary to keep the plant running and operating well. So three reactors running blew up. Very likely the accident might have had a lot of the same outcomes without the tsunami. So there are lessons all through this in what cracked, where it cracked, why it cracked. Now, why would a shared infrastructure conversation matter? These new small modular reactors are being designed with massive shared infrastructures so that this is how you make these economical. You say, okay, I'm going to build for 12 reactors and I'll stick two or three in first and then we'll stick the other 12 in and everything's ready. We saved money. All we got to do is plug in this new modular bullshit reactor. So, and running that reactor is artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence is what made the Boeing 737 crash a few times. It took the pilots right into the ground. And they were helpless. For training, for education, whatever the reasons were, that's artificial intelligence. So, these new things need to learn from the lessons of the old things. And I'm not sure that's been done. If an earthquake happens at a new SMR site, 
and ruptures shared facilities, what is the impact? What is the response? Where is the response activity? Is the county next to you that got these reactors capable of responding to this simple earthquake situation, right? What if it's downriver from a dam and the earthquake also caused a dam failure? So now you've got a day before this massive wave front comes to you, but you're suffering from earthquake damage. So that is one of the two pieces to Fukushima. Regardless of the outcomes, that sequence of events happened. They had a reasonable amount of time between that earthquake and that tsunami to learn something. It's what we're supposed to do well, is learn and improve, not learn and then destroy it and break people's confidence and trust in it. So there we are. So lesson two side was the tsunami and the effects of a tsunami on a nuclear plant or any chemical facility which were dotted up and down that coast. What were the lessons learned besides the, nu the Fukushima pollution event, which was actinides and heavy metals and precious metals and nuclear materials, all sorts of chemical risks released into the environment, nuclear risks. Those chemical plants up and down did that. So what did we learn? Now the problem is when you learn things, it gets more expensive. You might start taking profits away from somebody in a nice fat chair. You might start taking that uh, extra boat he wanted to buy and make it a little harder to get. So these are the lessons learned from Fukushima. What was supposed to happen, what did happen, is a large lessons learned activity went on under the Obama administration. And piece by piece that has been whittled away. Whittled away. I don't know what that wall is going to protect us from, but I got a feeling it's the wrong things, you know. So the lessons learned of Fukushima are still hang out there. What else could we have learned? Should we still be learning the extent of the spread of the contamination? Somebody somewhere has a good idea of this. To think that the maps aren't done, that the studies aren't being done, that the checks aren't being done to some level of rigor is naive because the industry is selling this to us those people have to live somewhere and they know it they need a workforce and they know it they need a population that doesn't want to hang them or irradiate them or poison them and they kind of know that but somehow they think they're impervious to the vagaries of life and they're not they're not so America moved our pollution after the EPA learned and began performing its functions. They upgraded their chemical plants and then they sit stagnant in the new places they moved to back in the 50s and the 60s and the 70s when this EPA thing got really big. They got their old plants grandfathered in so that they didn't have to worry about pollution and environmental controls. And they gave each other big bonuses and rewards and profits and the shareholders patted each other's backs. This is the real story of Peter Pan and the Easter Bunny. This is what's running too much. You need to learn a new way to move money through the economy new wave of politics Bernie's voice because Bernie has conversations about these things that you can follow and you can track and maybe you can understand how a decision's made in some that is some orange babbling buffoon that gets to call himself the president of the United States on the good side the apologists the people standing up for that man should be judged by peers not in the next life because the next life they're dead they don't exist anymore
you don't vote. Hey, a 10 minute video. That's one of the uh, YouTube thingies. They want you 10 minute videos to, well, anyway, I'm here. Peace out, folks. Good coffee. Going to get some more.